Man. Yo. The Sixers had a moral victory that should have been the victory. We'll talk about that and Mo Bamba's comments next on Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to FanDuel.com backslash Locked On NBA and use code all lowercase Locked On NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Hello, I'm Keith Pompey, co-host of Locked On 76ers, along with my man John Mitchell, the other co-host of Locked On 76ers. I'm about to say Locked On Mitchell. What's up, John? How you been, bro? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good, Keith, man. I had a... Watch, watch my Eagles take a take an L yesterday, a, a major L yesterday. But all in all, I'm good. Hey, Mitch, what's up? Debo just scored again. <laughs> <laughs> he he heard over the uh, he, he scored on the plane. <laughs> yeah, he scored, man, dude. It was they crazy. crazy. I mean, dude, they came out like mm. man. They mm. they talked trash and they backed it up. They up there fighting y'all security guard and everything. It's crazy. They like, yo, we taking prisoners. Out this know, piece. I'm surprised they didn't take the Rocky statue and put that on the plane on the way back home. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know. But listen, man, the Sixers almost pulled off an amazing upset. Um, but it was a moral victory, but it should have been a victory. I mean, we'll talk about that. Tobias mm-hmm. Harris, you know, struggled mightily in that game. Um, he, in my opinion, he played uncharacteristic of what we've seen Tobias do. And what I mean by that is it seemed like he was being a little bit selfish at times and it wasn't working for him. Yeah. So we'll talk, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about Mo Bama when Mamba saying he's getting a raw deal in Philly. Man. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll say, I mean, it's good to say that after you have your best game of the season. Right, right. You, you know what I mean? And then thirdly, We'll talk about this easy, easy, easy schedule the Sixers. And we touched about it a little bit on Friday. But, man, this thing is, man, the Sixers, this is one of them schedules that should catapult them up back yeah. into the top two of the East. Yeah. You know I mean, it should be. It should be. So Cupcake City, baby. Cupcake City. So, now, here's the deal. So, the Sixers, they go to Boston. With, and they go there, and they don't have Joel Embiid. They don't have um, Tyrese Maxey. They do not have um, um, uh, Nico Batum. And we already knew that Kelly Oubre, Daniel House were already out, right? Yeah. You think they're going about to get boat raced, right? Yeah. yeah. Brothers was coming out playing. Patrick Bev looked like Patrick Bev in high school because people forget he averaged 37 points as a senior in high school. So Pat Bev looked like that dude. He was him that game, mm-hmm. right? Covington was him. Everybody stepped up. To, but then in the second half, Tobias Harris made his first shot, which was a three, and missed his final eight. He also missed a pair of foul shots um, in, with three seconds left. He also had four turnovers in the game, three in the second half, two in the fourth quarter. And it was a moral victory. But you're telling me it should have been a victory. Yeah, I disagree with you, Keith, man. It was uh, it was it was good to see those guys show up. It was good to see Pat Bev come out and drop was it 28, 26, 8, and 7. Uh Paul Reed played well. Cub had five steals, 18 points. I mean, everybody stepped up except Tobias, you know, and um and, and the sage was really set in the um, 
in the, in the second half when Jason Tatum got ejected. You know, when Jason Jason Tatum got ejected, and you said, hey, man, look, you know, they're already short Porzingis, um, and now you don't have Jason Tatum, and the Sixers showed up and, and, and were fighting. I mean, that was a game I wasn't so sure, certain I was even going to watch after I saw, you know, all those guys who were absent. But I said, no, nah, I need to be I need to be informed and be able to talk about the team. And, and, and you know, Tobias just meant Tobias fell off a cliff. You know, Tobias fell off the cliff. You know, he um, and I'm a, and, and I like Tobias, but it's like, bro, if you don't go one for nine in the second half, if you go four or five for nine, maybe the 76ers win that game. If you just assert yourself and play better, you know, and give them something. You know, as opposed to just giving them absolutely nothing, you know. So you, so you're stuck. You, you're holding the basket. And yeah, it was nice to, it was nice to, for those guys to show up and you get a chance to see what other guys can do when the team is really locked in. Because there have been some times when, um, you know, the the, the the Timberwolves game comes to mind where they just had the guys. There was just nothing there. You just knew it was was, was hopeless. Um, but this game, you know, they had every reason to think they could win that game the way they were playing. You know, I mean, Pat, Patrick Beverly stepped in and gave us a kind of game to get you in the Hall of Fame if you do it quite often. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, again, it was, um, you know, Tobias had a chance to step up. And I, and hopefully this motivates him moving forward, um, you know, to, to, to play better and – you know, you know, you you're considered one of the big three on this, whatever a big three is at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're so right. Sorry. Yeah, so he's got to. Um, yeah, he's 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 got to take, he's got to take advantage of that opportunity next time he is an opportunity to step up, particularly against Boston a team that's that's just in front of you in the standings. You know, you got to do something there. Yeah, now here's the thing, though. Um, yeah, the thing in front of you, in front of the standings, have to do something. The thing that I didn't really like was I felt like in the second half, I mean, the first half, things were going well. You know, Pat mm-hmm. Bev was the man. They were they were going through him. You know, Tobias Harris was, in my opinion, he played well in the first half. Yeah. In the second half, it looked like he was getting in passing lanes, getting steals, and instead of looking for teammates, he kept trying to go. Like he would get, they would give him the ball instead of him. Like, cause Tobias prides himself on passing up a good shot for a great shot, and I mm-hmm. felt like he didn't do that. I felt like he, it was, it looked like to me, and I could be wrong, but it looked like I got to get mine. Mm-hmm. I'm the best player on the floor. Yeah, this is my opportunity to show people I'm the man, and I got to get mine. Mm-hmm. And and his trying to get his is what lost the game, I feel like. Um, you know, because then it got to a point where it was taking shots away from guys who were still baking. Like you look right. at it, Mark Marcus Morris was baking. He came in yeah. and did some yeah. things, you know. So, you know, I it, that was one of those things where and to me, like that was so out of character from now. I get it. Tobias receives a lot of criticism from people. And I think most of the criticism he received is because of the payday that he has, right? People say, is he worth a max salary? Is he this? Is he that? Now, it's not quite a max salary, but it's close to a max. So people are critical of it. But, you know, I felt that so people say, well, he misses shots like that a lot. But to me, what I'm saying uncharacteristic is because he wasn't looking to pass the ball. I mean, he had his head down and was attacking and there was mm-hmm. certain times he was wiggling. Like, you can, when he was going up, it looked like you can tell, like, that ain't going in. Like, it was just right. either he wasn't going in uh, strong enough or he was yeah. out of balance or this right. and that. Right. Or you're like, that ain't your game. Like, you know right. what I mean? It was like, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I just don't know. But you are right. Once Jason Tatum fouled out, I knew they won the game. I knew they had the game, and then all of a sudden they came back. But then when Tobias, remember Tobias came down one time and kind of like picked up his dribble, and I was like, "Yeah." You know, it was late in the game, and I'm like, "Uh oh, yeah. this thing mm-hmm. might be over." Like yeah. you know, it was bad. I mean, it was just, it was bad. And I kept looking over at the bench. People were encouraging him. They were encouraging him. 
but it looked to me like you might be in trouble, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? They gonna yeah. be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, it's interesting because I it was, was a little bit confusing. Is um, and, and it was in your story. Um, Nick Nurse was talking about the bias, and he said that he just wants to see him more in attack mode. You know, now, now, my, my question is because he was, like you said, he was looked to be going for his. So I guess he's got to strike that balance. You know, he's got to strike that balance of what is attack mode and when to attack. Um, I don't know if he was referring to when they have a full lineup, um, but when he when he does go into attack mode, he's got to go with some gusto. You know, you got to go down there and you, you know take some bodies with you. Yeah, yeah, you got to take some bodies, and that's the thing that couple that Duncan temp he had at one of them, it wasn't like emphatic enough. Like right. you know, what I mean, you got to either be I'm a dunk on you or I'm gonna go to the foul line, right? Right. And right. and and that's the one thing that he 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 didn't do. That's the one thing that he didn't do. You know what I mean? That's the one thing he didn't do. And I feel like you know Tobias. Just I mean again, this is something you learn from. Hopefully, um, I'm not going to kill him as much as yeah. most people are. But at the same time, you are right. They should have won this game. They should have won that game. The game was at take. Yep, they should have won it. They should have won it. But look, I want to talk to y'all about Jace Medical, right? I want to talk to y'all about Jace Medical and the Jace case and the whole nine, right? So the thing is, what you need to do is the thing about I like about the Jace case is the Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including um, UTIs, respiratory infections, sinuses, skin infections, among others. This stuff can happen to any of us. You visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your uh, medications will be dispersed by a licensed um, pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be, be, pre be prepared than a day. Go to jacemedical.com and use the offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. I'm telling y'all, go to jacemedical.com and get $20 off your order. You will love it. I'm telling you, you will definitely love it. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league go to locked on sports today on youtube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel do it today people definitely do it today now mitch I got to read something to you or I got to read this quote, but I got to share it. First, I want to give you these numbers. So Mo Bamba played a season high 19 minutes and 30 seconds on Friday in the loss, right? Mm -hmm. He finished with a season high 11 points on four for seven shooting, including making two or four three-pointers. Bamba also had a season high six rebounds, one assist, one block, and two turnovers in his ninth appearance of the season. So afterwards, he was asked his comfort level because, you know, hey, this guy, what's your comfort level? Like, you remember you, you were out there balling and you're not really playing a lot. What's your comfort level? He says, it doesn't matter what my comfort level is. I kind of got a raw deal here, here. But that's the tough part about the NBA. Just got to be ready for when the opportunity comes. Now, you look at it like a raw deal. You can say, okay, you were supposed to be the backup. You and Paul Reed battling. Mm -hmm. But there was times when Mo Bamba in the preseason, he would come in and he would struggle. Right? Now, you heard at practice that he was blocking shots. He was doing all types of things, hitting threes. Mm -hmm. Whenever you saw the, the preseason games and he got minutes, he was struggling. Yeah. What do you make of his raw deal comment? 
I think it's bogus, man. I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's Mo Bama finally had a decent game. I mean, give him his credits. Give him his credits. What do you have, 11 points? Six yeah. Points, and, a, and a block shot, though. So he filled in admirably in um, him and B's absence. But it's like, you know, Mo, Mo Bamba has to come to the realization. And, I mean, his career, you know, where his career goes is in his hand. I mean, you're talking about a guy who was the – the sixth pick by Orlando in the 2018 draft. And and since then, he's only averaged in double figures once. And that was in 21, the 21 22 season with Orlando. Um, and, you know, he, he you know, I, I, I want to see, you know, you, you, you want to root for him because he's relatively local, having gone to West Town High School. And <clears throat> you look at him and it's like, okay, well, you, you, you had the, the body to be a and the length to be that rim protector and you know i don't necessarily want to see the 76ers when they don't play joe lmb be forced to go to a small ball center which is what they apparently have opted to do you know as opposed as you know as opposed to you know going with him as a starter so you know when, when is he talking about it's like raw raw deal is for us you, you need to step up mo bamba you you know I keep I said this last time stop playing like your mama and play like Mo Bamba, you know get a seventy six or something man and that's that is nothing on your mama brother I love your mama I'm sure you do too, but you know step up and play some ball man you know it's I mean you were considered to be one of the best players coming out of high school, one of those guys who people said, well, he's got to put on put some weight on his body. He hasn't necessarily put much weight on his body since he left high school. Well, don't, hasn't gotten a whole lot stronger. And when the opportunity presents itself, if you can if you can give the 76ers more showings like you did against Boston, you know, because nobody's expecting you, you to be Joel Embiid, but people are expecting you to be representative of a guy who can run the court, who can who can give some rim protection. And has shown a propensity to hit three pointers, you know, uh, unlike most big men, you know, his highest can do. So you got you got to start giving people. There's got to be some wow factor with Obama when he gets on the floor, you know. And, and let's be quite honest, man. You know, you're trying to keep your long and your lengthy, and people will be willing to give a, a guy who was drafted number six in the draft that that's the part of that cachet. People continue to to put you on your squad and say, well, well, maybe I can reclaim it. But the general managers, every general manager thinks they can fix something. But, you know, I, I would say, Obama, just take this, take your, your last outing against Boston and build off of it. And don't go pouting to Keith Pompey and anybody else who will stick a microphone or an iPhone at your mouth and start talking about raw deals because it's not flying, bro. It's not flying today. Yeah, it was kind of bad. I mean, you know, I was shocked when he said it in the way. I was like, whoa. But, but you know, like I said, he had the perfect game to say it afterwards. Like, yo, I'm balling. I'm doing it. He did look good, though. He, he did, did look, look good. good. Do it again, though. But, you know, I, I guess you got to say stuff that in his eyes, maybe he feels like he was getting a raw deal. Maybe he felt like he got a raw deal against the Lakers. That's who you can say you got a raw deal against. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say that. This last three three game stretch was probably his best three game stretch. First time he probably played in three games, right? Right. Because see, the thing about it is, when they go up against the Lakers, now he he was balling against the Lakers too, but the Lakers kind of waived him, right? Yeah. He didn't pick up his option, and it would have been for eleven million dollars. So he had a lot a lot of reasons to be right. Them. And then he came in and played okay against. Um, the, the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, okay. Mm-hmm. But this one was by far his, not I'm going to say by far, because I felt the Lakers game, he did well. But mm-hmm. that was in, like, garbage time a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. This one, he gave them some, but made an impact. But you're right, it does sound kind of crazy coming because, you know, like, it's not like you weren't given opportunities and he was given opportunities. But I guess you got to feel that way um, to keep you motivated. You know what I mean? And I was just amazed that he had the heart to come out and say it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it sounded like Chuck D. Like, I got a raw deal. I'm like, bro, you didn't get a raw deal. You 
this is how you're playing, man. You know, um, and, and I'm rooting for Mo Bob. I want to see him have a long double digit career in the NBA. Man. And then your chance to begin building on that now is making taking advantage of these minutes you get when they need a, 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 a seven footer. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. But you know what, man? I want to talk to you right now about uh, FanDuel. I couldn't get it out. FanDuel, because I couldn't get it out because I was about to say something about the game last night, but I didn't want to do it. But There was no game last night. That was a yeah. – The most competitive thing about last night's game was when uh, Big Dom and the Bull – Got into it. <laughs> that was like they should have been playing the Rocky music, and but after that they should have been playing the little Bo Peep music. <laughs> I, got, I got you. So look, man, as the weather gets colder, the NFL season offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customer gets one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet. That's a hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of better betting options, including spreads, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So, Mitch... Let's talk about this upcoming schedule. Right now, the Sixers are in fourth place with a 12-7 and seven record. You know, I think that they can go on a seven. I mean, if they don't go on a seven-game winning streak, something is wrong. And I know people are like, ah, oh, this and that. But, no, mm-hmm. there are some bad teams they're going yeah. to play. Like, the only team that has a pulse that they're about to play is the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. And they beat them already while they were under man. And I believe they should beat the Hawks. So, look, their next seven games. So, they played a 3-16 and 16 Washington Wizards on D.C. on Wednesday. Then they host the 9-10 and 10 Atlanta Hawks on Friday. Then after that, they'll play the Wizards again. And then they have consecutive games against the 2-18 and 18 Detroit Pistons before facing the 6 and 12 Charlotte Hornets and let's just blow this team up now the 7 and 14 Chicago Bulls people going to get fired over this squad this bull squad cuz they got two max level players and they're yeah. 7 and 14 right so this is an easy stretch Mitch. something that they should build on man like I'm serious they I, I can't see them going Five and two. I mean, even I think six and one is bad. That's just my opinion because that's going to be a bad loss. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, I mean, right now they've got the fifth best record. They're, they're tied with the Knicks with the fifth best record in the league. Um, and you know, lots of times, if, you know, we hear coaches say we like to look at games and segments, like in stretches of five games or two weeks or whatever, six games. We can, ha- however, they break it up, and this is one where, you know, you got two games against, uh, like you said, Washington, um, and Detroit, and, and 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 they're just hard. You know, we're we're at the quarter mark of the NBA season, and these these teams look like they're, you know, I mean, I mean, Detroit's got they got some young players, but they're awful, and Washington is just doing what Washington has done for decades, um, for the better part of decades. So it's an opportunity for the 76ers to really, you know, to, to climb back and, and to stay within striking distance of Boston. Uh, I think most of us believe that Boston does have the best record, the best team in that division. Um, but, you know, we, we, the Sixers have lost some ground with during the, you know, the, without Kelly Oubre, with these um, games they've had to play, you know, minus Maxi and minus Joel Embiid. Um, but other teams – have you know have been without players as well? So, but this this is a stretch where hey, if 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 Joel is is still ailing, and I don't think he will because he's had plenty of time to get well from whatever ails. And hey, Mo Bomb, this is your opportunity to step up and 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 
and, and not get a raw deal and, and take take control of your situation if that needs to be the case. I don't think it will be. I think that Joel will be healthy. I think Maxie will be healthy. And this is where the 76ers, like you said, need to get about, you know, run these seven off because I think, you know, the, the next winning team would be the eighth game against Milwaukee, against the Wolves, and they're like 15 and four, and you owe them one anyway. I think that game. I think that game is 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 here, so it's, it's a chance for them to you know stay close and and and, and send another message. I mean, this this team, this this rock, this slate of games is really bad. You know, yeah, it's, it's bad. Not, and that's the thing about the NBA. Like when we look at the NBA, and 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 see, it's also really bad, but it also gives people a false sense of self too, right? But it's really bad. The thing about yeah. the NBA, like if we're going to be real, so you look at it right now. So you got Miami, um, Orlando in there in the mix, Boston, yeah. um, Indiana, and, uh, and Milwaukee. Like, mm-hmm. these are the teams that you say, okay, let's look at it. Now, maybe – well, Cleveland did beat them now. So, you got to yeah. pick Cleveland in there, too. But outside of that, that – yeah. huh? But outside what, what of that, that – yeah. yeah, you got to put them in there. But outside of that, you like you, – y'all can't lose to any of these other teams. Yeah. You just can't. And even yeah. with those teams, like, even Cleveland – in Indiana, I know you lost to them, but you 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 got to beat those two teams. You got to beat them. You got to beat the Knicks. That that's another team we didn't bring yeah. up. But you got to yeah. like so yeah. you got to beat the Knicks. You got to beat them, and then the rest of those squads. It should be hate to say it, Joel. You ain't playing in the fourth quarter, right? I mean, you know what I mean? Like right. it ain't. It's yeah. not always going to be that way, but that's how it should be, and that's the problem with the NBA. Like, is half the teams. Or you got like a small group of contenders, and all those teams that we talked about ain't exactly contenders now. Right. Like they're playoff right. teams, but they're, they're not, not contenders yeah. for a championship. Yeah. Then you have losing teams, and then you have tanking teams. Right. right. Teams that's tanking, and right now you they can say nobody's tanking just yet, but believe me, once Christmas comes after Christmas. That's when you're going to see where they're like, oh, maybe we need to get rid of it. We need to do this. Yeah. We need to change the program. Yeah. So, like, I get it with people saying, um, but but yeah, the Sixers, they should, they should, they should win these games. I mean, it, it's it's good for them. This is a good, in a way, false sense, but in a way, it's a perfect time because of the injuries. You know, they practiced today, they were off yesterday, they were off Saturday and Sunday. But they practice today. Hopefully, guys can get healed up a little bit. You know, it gives Nick Batum two days to rest his hand. You know, Kelly Oubre, I expect him to play this week. I mean, he's been, you know, may probably most likely on Wednesday, right? So right. there's a lot for them. And it's great to have tune up games. But come on, man. Y'all, y'all can't lose. Y'all can't lose. And that's why. It would have been super great for them to get that one win. The Boston game would have been Boston so game would have been great. Would have been great. It could have been a springboard, you know. And, yep. and it would have it, it would have been a game that you say, okay, hey, now we, we just beat the top of the pile, you know, minus our guys. We stole one, acknowledging that you stole one that you weren't supposed to win, but they don't have that now. To mm-hmm. buy it. they don't have that now. And um, but you're right though. When you got Detroit twice, when you got Washington twice. I mean, that's like you know, that that's 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 somebody giving you a filet mignon and saying, "Go exactly. ahead, put it in, bro." Exactly. You're like, yo, thank you. Like, how do we hook this up? And then it's crazy because when you look at it, it's like, all right, so y'all ain't make it to the play-in thing. So yeah, we're gonna give y'all the worst team. <laughs> we're gonna give y'all the worst, the second I'll- worst team in the in the, in the East. Consolation. Right, yeah, go there, like. Oh, Consolation prize. I mean, that's better. Like when you think about it, for that's record, better, that's, yeah, that's yeah. better than like that's better than winning the the, uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah. the quarterfinal. Somebody, somebody yeah. likes the 76ers to give him that, yeah. man. That's yeah. Oh, uh, and then you get the hand, you get Atlanta again. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're right. Someone does definitely love the 76ers. But look, man, we love y'all coming in and and listening to us and 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 uh listening to this podcast 
We want to let y'all know that you can get this podcast wherever you get podcasts at, and it's free and available, like free and available wherever you get your podcasts at. Make sure you also go to our YouTube channel, Locked On 76ers YouTube. And when you go there, click on the Liberty Bell, and that enables you to become a new subscriber. And also you get notifications when we have new ones. Um, hopefully for the Sixers, I mean, they're, when they when they won't mess this up, so to speak, I don't think they will. But um, hopefully they, they'll have a seven-game uh, winning streak heading into their game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's going to be a close one, a yes. good one. So they'll have that. But we want to thank y'all for joining. Speaking for John and, uh, and me, we want to thank y'all for having, uh, for joining us. And we want y'all to have a blessed week. Peace. Y'all take care.